everyone, it's Miss Louise, and I'm so excited to bring you our Bible story today. It happens to be one of my all-time favorite stories in the Bible, you guys. I'm so excited. So let's pray to God and jump right in together, okay? Let's clap our hands. One, two, three. Good job. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for all of my friends watching right now. Lord, thank you for your great love for us. Please help us to listen and understand the amazing story you have for us today, because I know you have something great to teach us, God. We also pray for our Compassion Kids in Ecuador that you keep them safe and healthy and provide for their families. You are so good, God. Uh, in your name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, so over the last few weeks, we've been learning about the church. And friends, what's really cool is church, the church, and a church, it's very similar to like a sports team, like a basketball team or a soccer team or a dance team, any team really. But one major difference between a church and a team is that usually a team can only have a certain number of players. Like you can only have a certain number of basketball players on the court at one time. You can only have a certain number of soccer players on the field at one time. You can only have a certain number of people on your dance team dancing together at the same time during a performance. But the cool thing about the church, you guys, is that there is room for everybody to be part of the church. There is not a limit. There is not a certain amount of people that are allowed. The church is for everyone. And so Jesus, his family, God's family, it's never full. Never full. There's always room for more people who want to believe the good news of Jesus and be part of God's family. And friends, that makes me think of our story today about how there was a man who listened to the Holy Spirit. And this man, his name's Philip, he was able to share the good news of Jesus with somebody. And that man ended up believing in Jesus and trusting Jesus. And he became part of God's family. Friends, I love this story. It is such a good story. I can't wait to tell you about it. Friends, as we get into this story and over the next couple weeks, we're gonna have a new big picture question, okay? And our new question is, why does the church exist? Friends, we learned the past couple weeks that the church, it is not just a building. It's not just a place that we go to. The church is actually a community, a group of people. The church is all Christians everywhere who gather together in their communities to worship God and serve him. That is what the church is, friends. You and me, we make up the church. But so now we know what the church is, which is great, but why does the church exist? Why does God unite us together to be the church? Friends, here is the answer. The church exists to glorify God, to bring him glory by worshiping him, showing him love and telling others about Jesus. That's our job. That's the job of the church is to glorify God by worshiping him, showing him love and telling others about Jesus and showing his love, also showing God's love, but showing his love. Friends, the early church had some struggles. There were really great times in the early church, but there were actually some tough times too. And some members were selfish. We learned about Ananias, and uh, I always say her name wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira, we learned several weeks ago that these guys, they were dishonest about how much of their money and their treasure that they were giving to God. God had wanted them to be honest, but they were dishonest, and that caused some difficulty in the early church. Other members were arrested, mistreated, hurt, and even killed for what they believed in and for the good news that they were preaching and sharing with people and because of their faith. But through it all, friends, God used the struggles that their early church experienced to grow them, to strengthen them, to ultimately bring about some really awesome good in the world. And all of this, you guys, was done by the Holy Spirit's power. This, this strength and this goodness comes from the Holy Spirit. And so today, we're going to learn about a time that the Holy Spirit helped this man named Philip to lead another man to come to Jesus and believe in him. I love this story, you guys. It's called Philip and the Ethiopian, and we can find it in Acts chapter 8. Friends, let me read it to you. 
an angel of the Lord told Philip, a follower of Jesus, to go to a desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. So Philip went. On the road was a man from Ethiopia. He was an important official to the queen of Ethiopia. The man had come to worship Jesus in, or excuse me, to worship in Jerusalem, and now he was on his way home. He sat in his chariot, reading aloud the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot, so Philip ran up to it. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked the man, and the official replied, How can I, unless somebody explains it to me? So he invited Philip into his chariot, and Philip sat with him. And the official was reading these words from Isaiah. These words. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. He was treated unfairly. And his life is taken away. The official asked, was Isaiah talking about himself or somebody else? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah. So Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. And as they traveled down the road, they came to some water. What would keep me from being baptized? The official asked. And then the official told the chariot to stop. He and Philip went down to the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. And the official continued home and he was very happy. The Ethiopian official knew what the Old Testament prophets said, but he did not understand that they were speaking about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Philip to help the official understand the good news about Jesus, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, just like the Old Testament prophets said. Guys, how cool. I love this story. Such a cool story. So as Philip, as he left Jerusalem, he knew his mission. He could not stop telling others about Jesus, how much Jesus uh, did for them, how he died and rose from the dead, how much God loved them. Philip was taking the good news of Jesus far and wide. And my favorite part of the story is Philip's obedience to the Holy Spirit. When God told Philip to go somewhere and do something, Philip didn't hesitate. He jumped right in. He was like, okay, God, you want me to go to this place? Here I go. He was ready to go wherever God asked him to go. And the Bible, do the Bible um, doesn't tell us um, that God had laid out all the details of what happened next, but God knew exactly what was going to happen. God called Philip to go to this place. God knew exactly that Philip was going to run into this Ethiopian man and that all of this was going to happen. So in Acts um, 28, 26, what did God tell Philip? Friends, at the very beginning of our story, an angel of the Lord told Philip to go to this desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. And so Philip went. He was obedient and he didn't question it. He just went for it. And so as he was traveling, he saw a chariot. And lo and behold, this Ethiopian man, he's going through, he's reading his Bible. And he's not understanding what he's reading. He's reading from the book of Isaiah. And he's like, oh, this is really cool, but I don't really understand what this is saying. And then so uh, the Holy Spirit tells Philip to go up to this chariot. And Philip does. And Philip says, hey, do you happen to know what you're reading in that Bible? And the Ethiopian man says, no, I don't. How about you come in and you explain it to me? And so that's exactly what Philip did. And the Holy Spirit led Philip to tell the Ethiopian man about Jesus. God used this awesome opportunity. God used Philip's obedience for him to be able to share the good news of Jesus. And so that's just so awesome. So, so cool. So what happened because Philip shared this good news? What happened? What did this Ethiopian man want to do? Friends, he wanted to get baptized. He said he, he realized what he was reading because Philip helped explain it to him. And the Ethiopian man was like, wow, Jesus did this for me? This is amazing news. I want to trust in Jesus. I want to follow him. I want to get baptized right now to show God that I am ready to follow him, that I love him. And so Philip he got to baptize this Ethiopian man. So cool. Philip, he was obedient. 
to each next step. He trusted God no matter what was in store for him because God had great things planned for him. Friends, Philip, Philip is a great example to us. He really is. When we trust, when we trust Jesus enough to listen and be obedient to what he asks us to do, we can be used just like Philip in some really amazing ways to share the good news of Jesus with others in ways we may never expect to on our own. The Holy Spirit is the one who helps us do these wonderful things just like the Holy Spirit helped Philip do what he did and share the good news of Jesus with this man. And this story, you guys, it teaches us a lot about obedience, about immediate obedience. Not just listening to God and being like, yeah, God, I'll get to that later, you know, or even sometimes our parents ask us to do things and we're like, eh, I'll do that later. This story tells us that God wants us to be obedient and he wants us to follow him right away. The first time that he asks us to do something because he's got great things planned for us. Philip, he didn't make excuses for how far that journey from Jerusalem to Gaza was going to be. Philip wasn't like, oh, I got to walk that far? That's so long. Friends, that's actually in real life, that is a really long journey. And, and Philip didn't know exactly how long he was going to need to go before God told him to do something else. So Philip, he was obedient. He didn't question what God was asking him to do. And he didn't he didn't worry about how uncomfortable, how awkward it might be to walk up to this random chariot with this man and ask him what he's reading. Philip was just like, hey, God's telling me to go talk to this guy. I'm going to go talk to this guy. It's so awesome, you guys. Philip was totally obedient to what God asked him to do. And friends, we also can be obedient to what God asks us to do. Just like Philip, we can be like him. We can, we can be obedient the first time God asks us to do something. So Philip, he did obey. Friends, Jesus' final command to his disciples was to make more disciples and to baptize them. And the early church and Philip, they took that very seriously. They wanted to spread the good news of Jesus as much as possible because they wanted to see more people put their trust and faith in Jesus. They wanted to grow God's family. They wanted to see people saved and they wanted to be able to baptize people and celebrate what God had done in their life. So friends, it takes people like you and me to share the good news of Jesus with others. In today's story, the Ethiopian official, he knew what the Old Testament prophet said. He knew what the book of Isaiah said, but he did not understand that it was actually teaching about Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit led Philip to explain what the Bible was saying to this man. And this man's life was changed. He realized the good news of Jesus and he was ready to follow Jesus with his whole heart. Once Philip explained it, the official joyfully accepted Jesus into his heart and he chose to follow Jesus so much that he was like, I need to be baptized right now. I love God. I love Jesus. I want to follow him. Let me be baptized and celebrate this awesome, awesome thing that God has done for me. Friends, we can only imagine what happens after this story. The Bible tells us that the Ethiopian official that he went away joyfully. And friends, we can only imagine that he must have shared the good news of Jesus with people after this story took place. And maybe the Ethiopian official was even able to baptize some people too and celebrate them coming into God's family just as he had. Friends, such great news. Our God is so good and he loves us so much and he wants to use us to share the good news of Jesus just like he used Philip. Guys, great, great news. Guys, we have a new memory verse this week. A new verse. Woo! I love new Bible verses. Paul, he wrote this verse as a part of his letter to the Colossians. Our Bible verse come, is in Colossians 1, 18. And Paul, he wrote this. He wanted to make sure that they gave Jesus the respect and the glory that he deserves. Paul wanted to remind the people, hey, Jesus is good. Jesus is great. Jesus is amazing. We have 
to remember who he is and what he has done to save us. We have to keep that fresh in our minds that Jesus is our greatest treasure, that we exist as a church to worship him and celebrate him and give glory to him. Friends, that's our job as being part of God's church is to celebrate and love Jesus. And just like our story today, guys, we do that by sharing the good news of Jesus with others. And don't be afraid because just like in our story, again, the Holy Spirit gives us everything we need to share the good news of Jesus with others. Friends, let me teach you our new verse. We're gonna do the motions together, okay? This is how it goes. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead so that he might have first, he might come to have first place in everything. Guys, that's Colossians 1.18. Jesus, he is the head. He is above all of us. He is the head of our church. He is in charge of all of us. He is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead so that he might come to have first place in everything. Jesus wants to be the first, the most important person in our lives and he deserves to be because of everything that he has done for us to die on the cross for us to save us from our sins to come back to life so we could be forgiven jesus has done everything for us he loves us so much and he wants to be first in our hearts friends let's make jesus first in our hearts to love him and celebrate him and worship him and glorify him friends he deserves it and he loves us so much. Guys, let's pray and thank God for our story today. Let's clap our hands. One, two, three. Awesome. Dear God, thank you so much for our story today. Thank you for the story of Philip and the Ethiopian official. God, that you used Philip in such a wonderful way to share the good news of Jesus with this man. And this man chose to put his faith in you. God, you saved him. And Philip got to be obedient to you, God, and be part of this wonderful story. So thank you, God. We pray that you give us the strength and the courage to share the good news of Jesus with others because, God, we want to see more people become part of your wonderful family. God, thank you so much for saving us. We don't deserve your love, but you love us anyway, and you love us so much. So thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I will see all of you guys super soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.